The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus summoned his, disciples, his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits, unclean spirits with power to cast them out and to cure all kinds of diseases and sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot, the one who was to betray him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them as follows. Do not turn your steps to pagan territory, and do not enter any Samaritan town. Go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, proclaim that the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Today I want us to reflect on the theme, He chose ordinary men. He chose ordinary men. Jesus, knowing the mission he has come to establish, decided to choose 12 men to whom he entrusted this mission. And the people he chose as we heard their names, are ordinary people. They have no special position in the society. They have no professional trainings. They were just ordinary people, ordinary fishermen, ordinary traders, ordinary people like you and I. And these were the people he entrusted the kingdom of God into their hands. And from these 12, the mission started, and today the followers of Christ are numbered over 2 billion. How did this happen? It is the power of the Word of God. Because these men, even though have no qualifications like former training, devote themselves to teaching the gospel. They devote their lives, their time to this ministry. And that was why the message went to every part of the world today. You and I are being, have been chosen by Christ to move this message on to the next generation. Sometimes we think we can't do much because we are not wonderful singers or because we don't study theology or because we haven't known much. You don't need to know much. You don't need to have any special qualification to work for God, to be God's apostle or to become an instrument in God's hands. God has already put so much gift in you that I stand here today to talk to you doesn't make me qualify or doesn't mean that I am qualified for this job. I wasn't qualified for this job. If I am qualified at all, then it is the choice of God that qualifies me. And that same choice has also qualified you. But many of us today, like we heard Prophet Hosea saying towards the end of our first reading, we have left our fallow ground unbroken. And he says, now is the time to break your fallow ground. God chose Israel as a nation, not because they, have, they are better than any other nations, 
not because of their number. After all, they were fewer than every other nation. God chose them and blessed them. And today in our first reading, we heard Prophet Hosea telling them that the more blessings they receive from God, the further away their hearts are turned from him. And so he pronounced punishment that if they fail to change their ways, if they continue to rely on other gods, on other things that cannot help them, that cannot save them, the enemies will come. And when that day comes, even the kings will not be able to stand. They are going to run away from the city. And 10 years later, God used Assyria to punish them. Assyrians came, they destroyed their city, and took them into captivity, the 10 tribes of Israel. The captivity happened three times. Until this day, the 10 tribes was lost. God has chosen us not because of our qualification, not because we are better off than any other person, but he chose to bless us because of his love for us. And now that he has blessed us, sometimes we begin to rely, we sometimes rely more on those things we have, those things that cannot help us rather than relying on God. We have created for ourselves another God. We live in a world that has put God out of everything. We kick God out of our social life. We kicked him out of our religious life. We kicked him out of our marriage. We kicked him out of our schools. We kicked him out of our business. Everything. And because we have knocked God out of our lives, everything begins to fall apart. And until, unless we bring him back into the center of our lives, the center can never hold. So my dear friends, this is the time to seek God, to seek the face of God as we sang in the responsorial psalm. God has chosen to bless us so that we can come closer to him, not to go further and further away from him. And this is the time to break our fallow ground. Those who are farmers, they are familiar with that. When we talk about a fallow ground, a fallow ground is a, land, is a, is a piece of land that has been left uncult uncultivated for a period of time. And then it recovers its nutrients and it becomes very fertile. And when the farmer discovers that this part of land has become very fertile, then he moves from one place to that spot. And this is what God has given us. We have a land that is so fertile, but is left untouched. There are so many souls out there that need salvation, that needs to hear the word, the kingdom of God is close at hand. That is the message. That is all that Jesus asked them to say. Go and tell them the kingdom of God is close at hand. So we have left this land uncultivated, and this is the time to break our fallow ground. So we pray that God who chose ordinary men, including Judas, you see how much love he has, he knew the one who was to betray him, yet he chose him to be part of his mission, to be part of his inner circle of friends. My dear friends, let us pray at this Mass that God will give us the grace to be able to reach out to people irrespective of our qualification. I've said this before, you don't need any qualification. You just need your words and your action to let people know that this is the time to see God's face. This is the time for God's mercy and the kingdom of God is very close at hand. May God bless you.